The Hours Elite is about one thing and one thing only. Gaming, gaming, gaming. And probably one of my favorite motherboards to review since it is usually where you get the biggest bang for your buck. Today we are reviewing the excellent B550 Hours Elite Revision 2 from Gigabyte, an entry level which screams play with me, play with me now. Now what kind of joke am I supposed to do after this? What kind? So not too long ago, I had reviewed the B550 Arrows Pro, the more expensive sibling of the Elite. And my conclusion with that excellent board was that it's great. It's a great gaming motherboard, but nothing that the Elite could not do. It's supposed to be a gamer focused entry level. And truth is it packs much, much more than an entry level usually does. It is a deliciously focused motherboard, meaning that if a feature is not about gaming comfort and power delivery, you will not find it here. Obviously, this is a board I really, really like, and its B550 chipset allows it to have a PCIe versatility, which makes it cheaper than the X570 variant without slowing it down one bit. Now, starting with the obvious. We are dealing with a 4PCB layered ATX motherboard, and you know that when I read 4PCB layers, I do worry about PCIe signal integrity and VRM heat dissipation, but because this board has such a well-spaced layout with, well, less components, but also less signal interferences, it does manage to deliver us a very clean, stable and performant uh, uh, experience all together. In short, a very clean motherboard which screams engineering. CPU socket wise, it is powered by an AM4 CPU socket supporting anything between third and fifth generation of Ryzen CPU. In other words, PCIe 4 only processors, which has its importance because this is exactly where all of our PCIe 4.0 components will be sourcing their bandwidths from. And as a quick reminder, PCIe 4.0 will give you double the bandwidth level of the PCIe 3 point standard, meaning an immediate uh, performance gain on your day-to-day -day gaming. VRM-wise, well, that is where the Aorus Elite is really, really delivering on its promises. We have 14 50 amps power stages organized in seven V-core phases, thanks to its PWM doublers. That is a total of 700 amps worth of power, 600 of which are CPU-centric. That is obviously more than you'll ever need to run and severely overclock any of the supported processor, but it also means a more agile and a quicker electrical response to stably and durably overclock your processor. In other words, it is an overclocker. But where it really shines is in its cold temperatures, even in the most excessive configurations. With a severely 16 core overclocked processor, at no point did the VRM cross above 50 degrees Celsius, which is about the coldest VRM configuration you will find in its class. Period. And to achieve this kind of temperatures, the VRM has a few uh, tricks in its sleeve. First, having that many power stages greatly help its heat efficiency by spreading the CPU power load in a wider area. And of course, we have those dense tall VRM heat blocks, which do a great job at radiating an impressive amount of heat away. And right here, ours gave the B550 Elite uh, what it needed to deliver one of the most powerful VRM available at this price range on the mainstream market. And obviously, a huge and gigantic engineering kudos two hours for this. Memory wise, the B550 Aorus Elite supports up to 128GB of ddr in a dual channel configuration, clocking up to an indecent 4.733GHz, far surpassing its more expensive X570 variant. Do keep in mind that this kind of higher clocks only work if you install a single memory sticks. If you uh, populate more of the DIMM slots here, um, the maximum speed will decrease quite a bit. Staying in the memory, we have two M.2 Solid State Drive connectors both of which run at different PCIe standard. The closest one to your processor can deliver up to PCIe 4.0 level bandwidth, meaning that it can swap data up to a whooping 64 gigabit per second, obviously ideal for a booting drive. In both cases, our sticks can get really hot very quickly. Unfortunately, we have at least one beautiful long and thick thermopadded heat sinks. And special mention for its finish, beautiful sanded paint 
great texture. Staying in the storage, worth mentioning, the presence of our usual somewhat obsolete but reliable SATA 3.0 plugs able to transfer data up to a bottlenecking 6 gigabit per second each. Nothing new here. Export wise, we have four PCIe exports, a bachelor and three 16 slots with different speeds. As usual, only the closest one to your CPU can run up to 16 PCIe 4.0 lanes, therefore this is where you'd want your video card installed for optimal performances, hence the metallic reinforcement. Our second and third 16 slots are capped at only four lanes at PCIe 3.0 standard, so not really suited for GPU intensive tasks, which absolutely makes sense, especially when you're looking at a budget gaming motherboard. But in all honesty, PCIe 4 or PCIe 3 standard on PCIe exports really don't make a big deal of difference since all our video cards today on the market, 30 series or the AMD 6000 series, have still ways to go to be able to bottleneck the PCIe 3.0 standard. They do not output enough bandwidth to go beyond the PCIe 3.0 standard. So it's a great future proofing feature and, and mostly marketing at least for now. Back IO wise, first let me note the presence of an integrated back IO plate, which is rather premium and a welcome feature at this price range. And starting from the left, we have two second generation USB plugs, so no PS2 uh, nonsense. Uh, Gigabyte has decided to maximize its USB presence, which I absolutely approve. Our display outputs for Vega integrated graphics, which is quite interesting since this port does not support, at least natively, any integrated graphics enabled processors as of today. But it does hint that we will have some 5000 series Zen 2 architecture power uh, AMD processors coming in the next few weeks and months, which will be supported by this motherboard, so keep an eye open on this one. Next, we have our CPU flashback button for a CPU-less BIOS recovery or update, absolutely premium at this price level, three 5 gigabit USB plugs, and two 10 gigabit USB plugs, excluding a Type-C, which I really do regret. In my book, any gaming motherboard today should be including an external Type-C, but more on this later. Moving on, we have a 2.5 gigabit LAN plug, which is a sizable upgrade when compared to the previous iteration of that very board and which I obviously uh, upload since it will greatly improve our uh, connectivity and our gaming experience. And finally, we got our premium 8-channel ALC1200 audio codec. Not only is it one of the best audio codec you can have today uh, on the market, but it takes also full advantage of the multiple PCB layers of our motherboard since both left and right um, audio channel have been traced on dedicated PCB layers. But most importantly, we have those WiMA capacitors, these little red bricks, which guarantee us studio-like audio processing. The studio-graded capacitors are usually only present on gigabyte higher tier motherboards, so it is an absolute luxury experience which is promised to you both in playback and recording at a very low budget. And, and I want to uh, uh, underline the fact that this is a definite wink uh, to the uh, streaming community because your recording is usually what's it most at risk when you're buying, uh, when you're going for an integrated audio, but here you'll have absolutely zero risk even in a non-grounded houses such as mine. Overall, the back IO brings uh, exactly what I expected for this price range. I do regret the absence of Type-C, but of course I upload the, the connectivity upgrade as well as the premium audio experience that it brings. Now, taking a closer look to our B550 chipset. Since our CPU takes care of the PCIe 4.0 heavy lifting to feed our most performant components, the chipset can comfortably remain at PCIe 3.0 standard without slowing down your build. It also means that our chipset is much cooler, 6 watt instead of 11, so no more need for a fan to keep it cool as seen on its X570 variant. As a result, we do have PCIe 4.0 enabled on the motherboard without incurring extra cost by applying an active cooling solution. So definitely a balanced act that the B550 allow to gigabyte here. Moving on to our front panel connectors, we have two second generation plugs, great for monitoring, a 5 gigabit third generation plug, and a 10 gigabit Type-C front panel connector, which has its importance since we didn't have one on the back IO, and most importantly, which is absent on the pro version of this motherboard. Yes, it is. Definitely a luxury and premium feature here, and a big front panel kudos two hours for this. Cooling wise, we have six hybrid fan connectors and the word hybrid is important to me 
you know it because it will allow every single of these fans to support either a PWM fan, a water pump or even a flow sensor, which obviously will give this board an unprecedented amount of agility and enthusiastness for even the most uh, extravagant builders out there. And this is a feature that so far I've only been able to spot on Gigabyte made motherboard. So a big, very expensive cooling kudos to Gigabyte for that. Now, troubleshooting wise, well, we got nothing, nada, absolutely nothing. And that is the only real critic I will have for this board. When you have a PCIe 4.0 enabled motherboard with such an extravagant VRM, a lot of things can go wrong for any brands. And and not putting at least an easy debugger to guide you through the different booting process of your build is, I think, a real mistake and something that Gigabyte, I hope, will change and, and add on the next iteration of this motherboard. Finally, this would not be a gaming motherboard without the usual RGB goodness, which makes my heart full and my groin swollen, starting with a single and really really discreet RGB strip hidden under our roof. And boy, is it well hidden. It was like trying to spot uh, Bigfoot because I tried so many different angles to see. I mean, you, you can see it, especially when it's really, really dark. But yeah, maybe next time, ours, if you want to add an RGB here, just make, make it a little bit more obvious, but you know, I don't know. Next, we do have an RGB strip nested in our PCB, which is also extremely dim. So basically don't count on it to atmosphere, you crazy nightlife, you animal. But thankfully, we do have four RGB connectors, including two addressable ones placed in pairs at opposite end of our board for a better and easier access. In short, with a few RGB exports, you still have a healthy shot at exploding your parents' electrical bills, because obviously we all still live at our parents, don't we? In conclusion, at 160 US dollars, the B550 Hours Elite is about 30 bucks cheaper than its pro version. Now, despite some shortfalls, especially with the absence of the easy debugger and somewhat of a guest RGB implementation, in its engineering and in its uh, core gaming foundation, the B550 Elite can do everything its more expensive pro version can. And that is the whole point of this review. We got about an almost identical premium VRM configuration, a very similar premium audio codec, and the only real difference here is the PCB layering. We are going from the six PCB layers on the Pro to four PCB layers on the Elite, but the Elite very spaced out configuration and the fact that it's an extremely focused motherboard really compensates the lack of PCB layering and really gives us a very cool and stable um, experience all together. And it makes the B550 Hours Elite an absolute value, an absolute steal, and not only on the Gigabyte lineup, but if you compare it to the MSI B550 Tomahawk, which I absolutely love, it can do everything it does also, and even more. Remember those WiMAC capacitors? They start to weigh in. So yeah, in short, in very, very short, if you're a gamer out there who's looking to get the best possible gaming motherboard, future-proof motherboard for the least amount of money and yet have something who's premium, quality engineered, well, there's really nowhere else your money needs to be. Nowhere else.